What if I told you a senior administration official possibly engaged in voter fraud in the 2020 election? Big story, right? Yet you may not have heard that much about it. Now, I'm intentionally not naming the person or party yet because it shouldn't matter. Voter fraud was not rampant in the 2020 election, but it did happen in isolated cases on both sides of the aisle. And those involved should be held accountable. And it should be something we're on the lookout for in 2022 and 2024. One of the people warning of voter fraud in the run up to the 2020 election was White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. What we do know is, is a number of times as we have mail-in ballots, if there is, is not a uh, chain of custody that goes from the voter to the ballot box, uh, mischief can happen. Do you realize how inaccurate the voter rules are with just people just moving around? Anytime you move, you'll change your driver's license, right. but, but you don't call up and say, hey, no by the way, I'm re-registered. voter fraud, though. We need to make sure that everybody's vote is cast, but we also need to make sure that, that no one else uh, disenfranchises those by uh, uh, creating a fraud uh, on, on the voting system. Today, the Washington Post did an in-depth story, which sure makes it look like Meadows' wife, Deborah, lied on voter registration forms, claiming that she lived in a mountaintop mobile home for at least 30 days, despite not actually living there. The voter registration form called a one-stop application asks for a residential address where you, quote, physically live and is signed under penalty of perjury. According to a notice at the top of the form, fraudulently or falsely completing the application is a class one felony. Now, according to reports, Meadows and his wife have never lived at the address in question. And Mark Meadows himself may have never set foot in the house, which is located four miles north of the border with Georgia. Last week, North Carolina officials announced they were investigating the former White House chief of staff for possible voter fraud after it was reported that he registered to vote in 2020 using the same address. And let me be clear, this isn't about partisan politics. This is about possible hypocrisy. Mark Meadows helped push false claims of systemic election fraud in 2020. He's the one that warned about the potential for mischief with mail-in ballots. He opined about voter rolls being inaccurate because of people moving around. He talked about protecting the voters from a fraud on the voting system. And now he's under investigation to determine if he did just that. Yet few in the cable news world seem to be covering this story much. If Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain, were accused of the same thing, we'd be doing this story, but it would also be all over the right-leaning media. These are serious allegations against one of the highest ranking members of the Trump administration. The fact that he's now under investigation for the very thing he's been crowing about for years should concern all of us who care about voter fraud, regardless of party affiliation. Joining me now is Glenn Kessler, editor and chief writer of The Fact Checker for The Washington Post. Glenn, thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate it. So you did a, a deep dive on this. What do we know for certain about the claims that Mark and Deborah Meadows made about North Carolina, where they lived in 2020? Well, we actually know a fair amount because North Carolina actually is very transparent about, uh, you know, the forms that people file uh, in order to vote and the data about where and when they voted. So what we know is that uh, both Mark Meadows and Deborah Meadows signed forms that said that they lived in what is essentially a 14 foot by 62 foot mobile home. Uh, and it's a home just, as you noted, just on the edge, close to the border, very far from wherever they had previously lived. We also know that they sold a house that they used to use as their voting address. Now, the interesting thing is that is a house that Meadows' mother, Mark Meadows' mother had lived in, and she moved out in the home, uh, to, she moved to Georgia and the home was sold in March. So um, about nine, you know, eight or nine months before the election. Uh, so they didn't have a home anymore in North Carolina, uh, but they filed a form in September, September 19th, saying that a day later they were going to move into that mobile home. The owner of now, that mobile home said, uh, go ahead. 
No, I, 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 would, I, I would just, please go ahead. Uh, the, the owner of the mobile home said what? Uh, that uh, she never sold the home to them and she still had it. She didn't sell it until to, a, to another person until 2020. Uh, but the important thing is you need to be able to say you've lived for at least 30 days in a, in a location in North Carolina. So just before the deadline where they would have lost the right to vote in the 2020 election in, uh, in North Carolina, they filed that they had moved. This was their new home. Interestingly, they included a post office box as the place for which to send the voter registration card. And that post office box was located, you know, nearly 100 miles away in near a uh, city that they previously had lived in. Now, are both Mark Meadows and his wife, Deborah, both being investigated by North Carolina officials? Well, I asked that. The North Carolina officials have announced they're investigating Mark Meadows. They said the investigation is continuing and that, you know, if other people need to be investigated, uh, they would also investigate them. Uh, I mean, and I took that as a sign that she is obviously being looked at as well. Because the thing I one thing I found discovered this week and that the North Carolina officials gave to me is that she filed a, a form to shop to vote. It's called one stop voting, basically voting early. And she put down that false address at the mobile home uh, and at the same time brought along an absentee ballot from Mark Meadows. That absentee ballot request also had that false address on it. So, you know, typically in these kinds of cases, um, the person who is investigated, suspected, et cetera, says that it was a mistake, right? That there was not intentional, there was a misunderstanding, et cetera. Um, what do you make of that kind of claim in the context of this? Well, I think that would be difficult to make. Uh, I spoke to a woman who was charged and, and faced up to 19 months in jail for filling out one of those one-stop forms uh, this is this is a black woman who was char who had been she was on probation for after uh, serving time for felony assault and she did not realize she said it was a mistake she did not realize that uh, if you were on probation you could not vote even though the form said if you're on prob mm -hmm. probation you shouldn't be voting in in the case of you know Deborah Meadows she filled out that form and she certified that her address she had lived at least 30 days at that mobile home. But it's a well, little harder to make the case it's a mistake because um, she not only filled out this form, she also filled out the voter registration card. Right, so the ultimate question is going to be, did they or did they not uh, live in that home uh, that she had cited? And uh, that, I guess, will be something that the North Carolina officials will have to investigate. This is a you know, this is really quite a stunning story. And again, to me, the most important part of it from a news perspective is the potential for hypocrisy. We shall see what happens as the North Carolina officials investigate. Glenn Kessler, thanks so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.